evolution of gas turbine combustion systems to DLE extending fuel flexibility. Demand for higher gas turbine flexibility with reliable combustion systems is becoming a decision-making factor in several applications across the power generation and oil and gas industry when selecting turbo machinery. During this exciting workshop, I will share the latest developments in dry low emission technology with non-standard gaseous fuels and dive into specific cases where burning process gas helps refinery, petrochemical or upstream operators avoid flaring and capitalize such gases generating power while matching highly stringent emission requirements. Just to start with, I, I would like to position what, what part of the turbine we are going to discuss about today. Uh, this is one of our small range uh, gas turbines. It is an SGT 400. It is a two shaft uh, machine, as you can see here. Uh, we have uh, an axial compressor, transonic, with inlet guide vanes. Air is drawn through the compressor into the combustion section, entering backwards into the burner, and then continuing its path through the first turbine stage, power turbine, and, and so, so on. The combustion system withstands uh, the highest uh, pressures and temperatures in our system. So it is very critical not only to select properly materials, but even more critical to select cooling in this area. Uh, peak temperatures are uh, highly related to uh, NOx uh, ge generation. The uh, phenomena that occurs uh, for, for, for NOx uh, generation is that we normally reach peak temperatures and we'll have what we call a thermal uh, NOx generation formation. We have here an example of a conventional burner versus a, sorry for that, dry low emissions uh, burner. The main difference is that in the conventional burner we are entering air together with fuel without previous mixing in order to create a flame that is very, very hot at the beginning the tactic to get into the turbine inlet at a decent temperature is adding cooling media in this stage, normally air. The problem is that if we only add air, we will not be able to reduce the NOx emissions. So then the traditional way to abate emissions has been to use a diluent that we add at this stage of the, of the combustor. We can use water or we can use steam. If we use water, we need high quality water. We need demineralized water. Therefore, if we are building a plant, we need a demineralized uh, water system treatment, which is going to increase the capex of our project. We don't have that problem in a dry low emission system. We can avoid it uh, completely. The key difference between both is that we will enter the uh, first section of the combustion chamber with a pre-mixed uh, uh, air and uh, sorry, air and, uh, co and, and the fuel uh, at a different rate. The methods to, to, to provide uh, this, this mixture are addressed uh, in different ways since, since the beginning of the 90s until today. I will go through it uh, showing you our second, third and fourth uh, DLE combustion system. Here you can see what happens on both, uh, on both types of, of, of combustor. With a conventional one, we are going to be in this range, range of NOx emissions. Therefore, we need either water injection or an SCR at the outlet of the, of the exhaust in order to comply with uh, regulations. We are not only talking about being environmentally compatible, we are talking about complying with local regulations. Um, this is happening now in Europe. Uh, there is an European directive that everybody has to meet 50 milligrams NOx per normal cubic meter at 15% uh, uh, dry oxygen. Uh, operators with conventional uh, fuel, uh, fueled gas turbines have an issue because they need to move from here to here. And the only way to do it is by installing a dry emission system or adding uh, catalysts or media to, 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 to cool down the combustion. But we'll see some real examples uh, in, in a few uh, seconds. 